Hi everybody. If you're building anything even remotely complex, you can't really go very far without realizing you need to use some JavaScript to set some CSS styles. In this video, we're gonna look at what that means and two approaches you have for making it all work. So first of all, I'm gonna be wondering why. You know, I've been very happy using CSS to style my content and I use JavaScript to do JavaScripty things, but why would I wanna modify how an element looks using purely code? And here's the thing. There are many, many cases where you want to do that. Some of them are where your content's more interactive. You might be playing a game, you might be doing something where there's something's going on on screen and you can't really control it using CSS. You might need to rely on something external like JavaScript to do that. Or you want to style something dynamically based on what a user is doing. They might be clicking on something, they might be hovering over an element and you want another element somewhere else on screen to be affected. All these things based on user input might need to be styled as well. And of course, the generic catch-all thing is you just have some code and this code needs to modify how something looks. In all these cases, you can not really get very far with CSS, but that's where JavaScript really comes in. You know, JavaScript comes in and allows you to do all these things and more. And there are two approaches that you have for doing this. So in JavaScript, one approach is you can set the style on an element directly. That sounds pretty crazy, but it's pretty cool. And the other approach, which is you know, something that I like to use a lot, is where you add and remove class values on element and have the appropriate style rule then get applied. And so let's look at both these approaches in a little bit more detail. So when it comes to styling an element directly, what it means is this. Every DOM element you'll ever run into will have a style object. And this style object allows you to set these properties on whatever element you're affecting, just like you would have done in CSS, as if using a JavaScript syntax. And the way it looks is as follows. So here I have two cases. One is a single element case and one's a multiple element case. So look at the single element case first. So here I have my element, which is just a DOM element that is identified by an ID value of Superman. And I'm using the query selector method, a video that might, you might have seen already, where I'm just referencing an element based on its, you know, its selector syntax. In this case, Superman is an element at its ID value and its CSS syntax for identifying would be hashtag Superman. And all I'm doing here is I want to have the background color on it. So I'm calling my my element object and I'm setting the style property and then calling the background color property on top of that. And I'm specifying the value that I want for it. So the thing to notice is this, almost every CSS property you wanna use, actually every CSS property you wanna use, not almost, all CSS properties you wanna use, will have a JavaScript rep representation that you can tackle onto from the, from the style object or style property. So the way it works is this, in all these cases, you'll have a property that has you know two words like background dash color or something like that, you camel case it. The first word is lowercase, you remove, this, you remove the dash, and the second or third or fourth words, all of them are just you know, capitalized. And that's why the background color property looks as follows. Now, that's a single element case. And the multiple element case is really no different. The only variation is that I'm using the query selector all function as opposed to the query selector to find all elements that in this case match, match a selector who, you know, all these elements have a class value of bar. And once I have that, I can just iterate through them just like I would using any kind of, any kind of a collection of items. And here I'm setting the style property or style object and setting the opacity property on it and setting it to a value of zero. So basically what it means is that my code, you know, I find all the elements that have a class value of bar and set the opacity to zero. So it's a very, very simple case of styling elements by using the JavaScript style object and setting them values on them directly. So pretty straightforward. So now let's get to something that's slightly, slightly more roundabout, but also very powerful, also something you'll be using quite a bit. The second approach is where we're gonna be styling elements by mod modifying, adding and removing class values on elements. And the way we do that is by using the class list API. And what the class list API does, is provides you a very easy way of finding an element and deciding whether to add, an, add, add a class value to it or remove a class value to it or even toggle class values. It's a very expressive and powerful API. And what this allows you to do is, as elements have their class values you know, modified, if there are any style rules listening for any variation of, the, of an element with its class value there or not, the appropriate style rule will get applied. Now that might sound a little confusing and it may, not, may not have done the best job explaining it. So that's why we have examples. So let's say we have some HTML looks as follows. I have an unordered list and its ID values drop down and I have a bunch of list elements, nothing, nothing too crazy. Let's have some CSS into it. Let's say I have some CSS 
and it's just a class value called disable menu. And what it does, it has a display property set to a value of none. So if this class value were to be applied to an element, you know, the contents would just disappear. So let's say that we do want to apply the disable menu class to our drop down element. The way it would look like is this. I basically have my drop down element, and I just specify the class value to be disable menu. Now, this is what I do in markup if I had to manually decide whether to add the class value or not. In a dynamic situation where you're gonna have code, you're gonna have input you're gonna be reacting to various other things, you can't really rely on being manually having your page already set up to do this. That's where the code part comes in. That's where the class list API comes in. So for right now, the class list API that we really care about contains two methods that are interesting. One is the add method, the other is remove method. In the first case, we're adding a class value and we're adding a disable menu class value to our dropdown element, which we're just using the query selector method on again and using the hashtag dropdown query selector syntax because the ID value of our dropdown is, well, dropdown. And so here I'm calling dropdown.classlist.add and disable menu. When this code runs, it is the equivalent of what you saw here, where in markup, the class value now has a value of disable menu assigned to it. And if you were to undo that, you can use the classlist.remove property, remove method, and that will remove the same class value that you added earlier, in this case is disable menu. The end result will be what we started off with, which is our dropdown not having any class value at all. So there you have it, a very quick overview of the two major approaches you have for styling content directly. And the interesting thing is, all these things you're gonna see in this particular video, you're gonna see amplified and repeated many times in other videos as well, because for a lot of the work that we do, it's, you know, I love visual things and love working on the front end side of things. And what that means is that there's a lot of JavaScript that is going to be modifying what you end up seeing, and that indirectly will use either the approach where we're setting styles directly or we are toggling class values and element by using the class list API. So with that, if you need any help, by all means, you know, I'd love to be able to help you out. So post on the forums at http colon wackwackformatgroup.com where I and a bunch of other friendly people, probably the friendliest people you ever meet on the web, will be happy to help answer your questions or just, you know, shoot some ideas with you on how to make things, make things better. And of course, if you like this, tell your friends and enemies. You know, I think everyone should know how to style elements using JavaScript, so even people you don't like, so be sure to share it with all of them. Hit subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos. And if you like, you know, little web development, little updates and things that might be related to front-end development in particular, you're gonna follow me at Krupa on Twitter you know, where you'll see some bite-sized updates from me every now and then on stuff that is interesting. And of course, buy my book, JavaScript Absolute Beginner's Guide, where I cover topics kind of like this, but more in greater detail and in a variety of different different formats. So, you know, you can buy it in Kindle, paperback, and of course, there's a video of this here right now. All right, guys, see you guys next time.